All right, so we got Studio One open, and the first thing I want to do to show the example is drag in the file of the song that we're working with. Um, this particular song didn't have a file template attached to it when I bounced out of Logic, um, so this was just a good example of how we're going to just chop this up and have a perfect sync uh, with the BPM in Studio One. Um, so if I play it, you'll hear how it's totally out of sync with the metronome. And traditionally, man, at this point, you know how we do it. We'll try to, you know, slow this sample down on the BPM, try to match it up and try to find the BPM, you know, the sync to it. And, oh, man, it just becomes so crazy trying to find the, the perfect match to it. And if you get lucky enough, you'll try to tap tempo it and it stays in sync for about uh, a couple of seconds. But after that 30, 40 seconds, you'll find out it starts to, you know, get out of sync. You know, and, you know, if you're only doing a segment of a song, that works. Um, but it's nothing like having um, a full BPM sync for the, the entire duration of the song. And to do that, I use Serato Sample to convert the sample. So it converts it to a perfect sync to my DAW from the start of the song all the way to the finish of the song. So from here, I'll create my start point. I'll hit record, start it. And from here, I want to extend that range, that MIDI range, all the way to the end of the song. And from here, we're going to bounce it. Look at that, perfect sync. So from here, what we wanna do at this point is we're gonna split this at the grid. And depending on the time signature that you want, if you want a full bar, um, use the drop down menu from the quantize section and select one over one. And when we hit split at grid, it's gonna split it and give us that, just that first bar of the song. And what we wanna do from here right click on the file go to audio and we're going to send this to impact and impact is going to grab all 113 chops of the files and spread it over all of the paths from pad bank a all the way to pad bank h a lot of you guys who are using impact xt you know you have to do individual pad selects when you want to make your adjustments and set up your parameters um, but what I like to do is do all the pads at the same time for this particular style of chopping and sampling. I always highlight all of my pads by hitting shift on your keyboard and clicking on pad 16 in the right hand corner of, of Impact XT. Because what that does is highlights all of the pads on the impact. And from here, I like to do, instead of one shot where it's continuous, I like to click on normal. Um, where I can um, set my own release and sustain by hitting the pads or the keys on my keyboard. And so it doesn't overlap on the other pads that I have. I'll set the choke to one and I want to click on follow tempo so it stays in sync when I slow down or speed up the BPM in Studio One. And now you can see that all of the files are imported all the way down to <laughs> one pad left on uh, bank H, so that's cool. And since everything is loaded up, before I start tracking my samples, um, I always click on pad focus on the Impact XT. And what this does, this gives me a visual of the waveforms on each pad independently. So if I hit C1, my pad 2, you'll see that they're changing, changing views of the waveforms. And that's where I can start selecting my start and end points of the samples. moving on to the next so I always kind of just click this just as a um, general practice so I can have a visual and see what the actual waveform is and just want to make those adjustments I'm um, on the fly it just gives me that visual um, so I can start my endpoints and if it's off and if I hit a pad and it's off it's not gonna really change as much 
I hope this works out for you guys, man. If there's any questions or uh, comments that you want, drop it on the list below. Always subscribe and like to the videos. And again, you guys be safe. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Peace.